All right, so here we go. So we've covered introduction to logic using number comparisons, number to variable comparisons, variable to variable comparisons, and string comparisons. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit with arrays. So I've already opened up a script. I've saved it. This is called logic with arrays, but you know, with our prefix MATLAB all the time, we're gonna say clear and CLC. I'm not gonna make this a section because we're really just gonna run the whole thing at one time. But before we get started, I need some arrays. So let's say A. Um, let's start with, uh, I don't know, like a three by three. So let's say three, four, seven, or I'm sorry, two, and 76, 82, and nine. And then uh, let's do zero, 23, and five. All right. Now, I'm gonna copy that entire array. I'm gonna paste it right down below. I'm gonna rename the second copy B. Now I'm gonna just change a few values because I wanna have some of the values that are the same, whereas they're equal, some where, they're, where they aren't, some are less, some are not. I'm gonna make the first one 314, negative two, where one is the same, one is now greater, one is now less than. Uh, let's make the 76 just six. Let's make the 82 uh, negative 82. Let's say nine, let's turn that into zero. And then we'll say zero and I, I suspect, let's say negative 23 and then 15. All right, I think we're gonna get a, a good juxtaposition to give us enough of a comparison between A and B that we can get the point. Um, now we, we started off by calling things out, right? So we had out, not like capital out and uh, not OU, the schooner falls over. Uh, so we got out one, and we're gonna say, look, is A less than B? Again, I'm adding the spaces just for contextual space so that you can see what's going on. But for out one, we're gonna run this, and let's take a look at what we get. So for out one, what we've done is we've gone element by element through A and B. We looked at one, 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 two, one, three, like row one, column one, row one, column two, row one, column three. And we're comparing the values at those locations. So location by location is the assessment that we're doing. So we're saying, look, is A less than B? So A at 1, 1 is 3, B at 1, 1 is 3. So no, it's not. That's why we get a 0. Now, 4. Is 4 less than 14? Yes, it is. So we get a 1. Is 2 less than negative 2? No, it's not. We can do this with anything. We can say out uh, 2 is equal to, give me the places where A is equal to B. Okay. Where is it that we made this copy, but we left everything identically or exactly as it was? Well, that's in row 1, 1 and row three, column one. So I'm sorry, row one, column one, row three, column one. Um, now we can do a lot with this, but here's the deal. So this sort of assessment can help us with the logicals, because again, as you can see, out one and out two have check marks next to them, so these are logical arrays. But if what we're really after are the values where A is less than B, then what we really need to do is this. So now we need to say out, oops, three. All right, so for out three, I want the values from A where those values are less than B. So I'm really just gonna copy this. I'm gonna paste it right down below, but out front, okay? So on paper, in your textbook, we learned things in like uh, the mathematical operators, the arithmetic operators. We learned about dot multiplication. So matrix multiplication is contingent upon the, uh, the dimensions being consistent so that we can perform the multiplication because it's matrix multiplication. But element-wise multiplication is an element-wise operation like we talked about. That element-wise operation requires that both of the arrays be the exact same size. They have the same number of rows, they have the same number of columns. If we have that, then we can multiply element by element through the arrays. And if we can do that, then we can just, you know, knock out an element-wise multiplication by doing the following. A dot times, and then whatever this logical array is. Now I could call this out one, right? And as a matter of fact, let's do that. Let's say out four equals A dot times the locations where A is less than B, which is the operation that we got, right? Right here. So now we're doing A times the logical operator, or I'm sorry, element-wise multiplied by the logical array out one. And here we have A uh, element-wise multiplied by, again, the same array, but we're just, this is compounding complexities, right? Here we're storing this as a save. Here we're doing, performing that logical assessment or that relation inside of line 16. So let's go ahead and run it. You'll see that out three and out four are the exact same. We can take a look at them. Zero, four, zero, 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 five. Those two things are the same. We can do it either way, okay? We can do the logical assessment where we do the relation and then multiply A, a element-wise by the outcome, or we can do the whole thing together. But the item of note is this. I now have the items or the elements from A where the elements in A are less than B. And we can do this with anything. Okay, so let's go ahead and save, uh, out, or I'm sorry, out four, no, out five, equals, and now I'd like uh, A, just go ahead and copy this whole line, because now I want 
the elements where they are equal. So where A is equal to B, multiply element-wise A by the whole thing. But here's, here's I guess, let's do one more. And uh, let's run it. And we'll, we'll show this piece by piece. So what we really need to look at, and I'm just going to put it down here. We need to look at A. Okay, then we need to look at, I guess, out one. And then we need to look at out three, I guess. And we'll take a look at these three things together. They'll be the last three things in my command window. Let's take a look at what happened. So, the line of code that I'm looking at is this one. Yeah, this one right here, out three. Where I've taken A, and I've element-wise multiplied it by out one. Out one being the array that saves the logicals where one is true, zero is false, where an element in A is less than an element in B. So I have A, 3, 4, 2, 76, 82, 9, and 0, 23, 5. Where those values are less than the value in row 1, column 1, row 1, column 2, row 1, column 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3. Where they are less than the value in B, I have now done that assessment, and I have found that these two locations are where, um, are where the values were less than B. So 4 is less than whatever is in B. 5 is less than whatever is in B. Some places they're equal, right? Some places they're more or less. I'm sorry, more. Um, what we're focused on is the less. So now I'm going to take A and I'm going to do the element-wise multiplication. So I'm going to take the element in A11 and multiply it by the element in out1 at row 1, column 1. So 3 times 0 gets me this 0. 4 times 1 gets me 4. There we go, element by element, right? So 1, 2 times 1, 2, like row 1, column 2, row 1, column 2. Then I'm going to take the 2 times the 0. That gets me 0. Uh, pretty much all of column 2 is 76, 82, and 9 times 0, 0, and 0. Everything is 0 until we get to the 5. 5 times 1 gets me that 5 right there. So now we can go through and we can do a whole lot. Now, here's why this is important, all right? So one of the things we can do from an engineering standpoint, and I'm going to get rid of A, out 1, and out 2. Uh, one of the things we can do from an engineering standpoint is let's say we had some sort of pressures array. All right, and uh, I don't know. It's we're just going to do something stupid for a little bit. 80, 98, uh, 200, um, 206. I'm sorry, it's supposed to be a two. Uh, 206, and uh, I guess 54. All right, so look, and then we're going to have a max uh, permissible. All right, so let's imagine that we're monitoring the pressures in some side, of, some sort of system. It could be a thermodynamic system, heat pump, uh, production oil rig. It can be pressure's in a blast wave, it can be whatever we need it to be, all right? Pressure's in a brake line if you're into vehicle design. But what we want to know is if we have a system that's measuring the pressures at all time and it saves all of those pressures to a data file, because what we'd want is a control system that tells us, look, if the pressure gets over a certain amount, I want you to shut the system down because it's not safe anymore. But we also want to save all of those measurements to a data file so we can do a post hoc, right? Like a QAQC, quality assurance, quality control check. We can verify that our control system that's supposed to shut everything down if we surpass a certain threshold, um, that our control system didn't miss anything. So we're going to come in, we're going to say our max permissible is uh, 195. All right, so obviously we know that 200 and 206 are greater than 195. Now, I can come in and I can say, look, give me the, the values in pressure that are greater than or equal to my max permissible. So copy and paste. We're going to save that as uh, errors, okay, and then I'm going to put the logical assessment where we've done the relational operator in parentheses, okay, so now I'm going to run this, and I get that my errors, so I have two values in my data file where my control system should have shut down my system, but it didn't. Now I'd like to know what they are, because maybe there's a pattern to it. Right? Maybe there's a pattern to when the control system doesn't actively register a value. And there's a long story that I can tell about that, but we don't have that kind of time. Um, in my past, we actually had a system that it errored out at 0.83. I'm sorry, things that ended in 8.3 because for some reason the control board just didn't deal with it. So what we really want is we want to know, look, give me the values from the pressure array okay, that my control system didn't catch. So I want to know where the values in the pressure array we're greater than the maximum permissible, and this will give me a logic array. Then I want to do the element-wise multiplication with pressures to find out what were those pressures where my system didn't shut down. And it turns out it's 200 and 206. So this is a way to do a QAQC post hoc check on a, a, a control system. So we can verify that while it is running live in real time, we do want to take some data that we pulled down and verify that this thing was catching everything it was supposed to. And if it didn't, why didn't it? Is there something that all those values have in common? So next we're going to cover uh, if, if else, if, 
uh, I'm sorry, if else and if else, if else logic blocks. And we're probably gonna break that up because that's kind of a lot for one video. So um, like always, I hope this helped and until next time.